Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition. Finally, another edition of Sound Booth Theater Live requests only. Uh, this is going to be a particularly naughty one. Not, I mean, I can't, it, it could have been. The first book that we're doing today, Gladia, Galatia, Crystallum Core by Scotty Futch. Futch or Futch? I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name, Scotty. Um, it's going to be just a mild, uh, a mild version or a mild scene in this book. But as you can see, the book itself is supposed to be pretty damn naughty. <laughs> oh, I think I, I think I hear somebody. Uh, yes, Lori is here. Hi, Lori. Oh, hi, everybody. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, I saw that cover. cover. I saw it. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't that just, don't you want that Pokemon? <laughs> Gotta catch them all. I forgot to collect this one. I forgot to collect this one. Oh, I didn't forget. Yes, so, uh, so this is a lit RPG, um, a, a dirty one. But we found a, a part of it that's actually not, not so bad as far as naughtiness. It's more funny than anything. Uh, it's a little, it's a little battle scene in the parks. I'm, I'm not against it in the future, but no. first okay. time. <laughs> well, re really, I, I know that Lori's got limited time today. That's that's the reason I chose a less naughty scene for this one, because we didn't want to uh, have like something naughty at the very beginning, because we we like to. It's nice uh, of him. Very people. nice of him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm. Let's see. And then uh, after this one, we got another section of. Um, of a book that I believe it was Danny Katz who requested it in the first place called Dragon's Trail by Joseph Malik. One second, let me get the cover out for you guys. So Jeff, you is there a way for me to see people commenting? Because I remember last time there were comments and I didn't see them. Yes. Okay, so Ian Mitchell's here. Noah Barnett's here. Phantom Kaiju is here. What's up, guys? Uh, let's see. Let me... I'll give you the link to the actual YouTube Cool, I'll mute it. Uh, so it's video, and then you can pop out the chat. So I'm gonna okay. put it in our chat here in our in, our, in the Google Hangout. <clears throat> See it? Yeah. Okay, so this is Dragon's Trail. Um, we'll be reading that one second, and that one I'll have another guest narrating with me, Mr. Ian Mitchell, who I can't think of anyone who's been watching the show as long as Ian. Um, so I'm really excited to have him on and actually, you know, talk to him and see him in person. That'll be really cool. And I, he actually wants to start narrating books too. So maybe you nice. guys can give him some pointers while he's on. Um, and then lastly, what so what, say again, Lori? Oh, what does Ian do? Is he a voiceover actor normally for other formats or? No, no. Uh, this is just something, you know, I think he's just been listening to audiobooks so much. He's like, man, I wish I could do something like this. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Cool. We'll ask him at the beginning of his segment awesome. what, his, what his intentions are. Sweet. And if they are honorable. Okay. <laughs> None of them are. And our, <laughs> my last request for tonight is by the notorious Eden Red. And uh, this will be for cringe theater for sure. Oh, let me get the light. There we go. Lude, Lude Shadowmancer. Shadowmancer. Concubine contract. Yeah. Yeah, that's just all me. I, I will be she the only one. She is feeling herself on that cover. She is really feeling herself. Yeah. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's into it. She is. Her whole body thing. Yeah. She looks a lot like a Pokemon as well. She looks more like a Pokemon. Well, perhaps more than the other one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But uh, let's see. Let me get our chat here. Um, oh, Ian says, I got interested from anime. Oh, badass. Yeah. Can I curse on this? Is it not? Yeah, sure. Oh, absolutely. Sure. You're reading, uh, it's, you're reading it's, the loop Shadow. <laughs> is it Shadowmancer? Shadowmancer, yes. Uh, it's Cursing is encouraged. <laughs> on the show um okay so all right let me i'm just gonna pop pop that <laughs> pokemon cover again real quick just to remind <laughs> you guys what we're dealing with this is gladia Christ crystalum core by scotty futch and futch i'm sorry scotty i don't know how to pronounce your last name i'm, I'm gonna assume it's futch very angry um 
And uh, but, I, I uh, didn't get a chance to read the entire thing, so hopefully, okay, character not a problem. Stuff, I'll do it. Okay, so um, what, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna be the main character and the narrator, and you can be everybody else. Okay. All right. So it's gonna start off with your line. You're an old lady. Okay. You're like a Walmart greeter. <laughs> um, okay. And so, uh, if anybody doesn't know, this book is basically what if Pokemon were hot chicks instead of cute little anime characters. Uh, Dave Wilmarth says he pronounces it Scotty touches himself. Okay. <laughs> Scotty, Wait, Scotty. is it actually about Pokemon? Like, are Pokemon not trademarked and stuff? Oh, I mean, they're I'm not. I'm fairly new to this genre, by the way. Just they're not actually sure. Pokemon, right? It's just like. Okay, I was, concept. I thought you were like, joking about Pokemon. Like, like you go, like you go out into a field and a hot woman yeah. will just pop up. Trying to gym, like, a hot a woman gym. Yeah, and, and try not like, to want to clip in real life. And then, then you send your own hot woman that you already captured to fight her. And then <laughs> they fight. And then if your hot woman wins, then you <laughs> capture the new That's one. That's like a wonderland. You... It's like a what? It's a wonderland. A wonderland. I know. It's, it's just... <laughs> I, I can't think of a better fantasy than that. So... That's so funny. Uh, Scotty touches himself, did a really good job coming up with this concept. <laughs> um, and I'm excited to explore it here. So here goes. We're, we're okay. So Scott, <laughs> Scott is the main character. Hmm. I wonder where he got that name. And uh, he's taking, he's, he's recently caught or bought um, a plant type. Um, what do they they call them crystallums the women are called crystallums in this in in this uh story and uh so he's he's taking her to the water park i think it's like a it's like a water park to battle to find and battle new water type crystallums and yeah we'll we'll see how that goes we'll see how this battle goes so <laughs> all right take it away lori miss walmart greeter Welcome to the American National Park. There are transit points set up at ranger stations in each zone. If you get into trouble, please head to the nearest station, said the older woman. <clears throat> she was probably at least in her late 90s, since she had a small touch of gray in her hair. Of course, that could be cosmetically chosen as well. It was hard to tell someone's age by looking at them. Of course, thank you. So we're free to enter? Asked Scott, asked Scott. Excuse, excuse me, guys. I'm just a little bit sick right now, so my voice is going to be uh -huh. not quite all the way, all the way. Great. Yes. You... Go ahead. Sorry. Um, old woman, man, come on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes, you have a day pass. If you wish to hunt for a lengthier period of time in the future, you will need to purchase a season pass. Replied the woman. Replied the woman with a curt nod. Scott would not purchase that pass. They were expensive. And honestly, the only thing they granted was the privilege to legally hunt for more than 24 hours in the park. He could simply transit out and then get back in line the next day if he wanted to hunt more. After he had a full team of four, the most crystalline he was allowed to equip until his 90-day review ended, he would probably never come into this park for hunting purposes again. They stepped forward and walked into a transit point that led to, a sector, f to sector 4, the section Scott chose as their entrance point. Sector 4 was close to the lake. Flora looked around for a moment, then smiled. Okay, Flora is Scott's newest crystalum. Okay, so she's a hot young woman. So Sorry. she's hot and she's like a plant lady. Like, think of maybe Poison Ivy from Batman. Okay. Yeah. Nice view. Scott followed her gaze and looked out at the pristine lake. Far beyond the lake, a tall mountain rose toward the sky. There was an evergreen forest surrounding the water as well. At the edge of the lake, wild flowers grew in a multitude of colors. Their heady scent perfumed the air and provided a beautiful accent to the picturesque scene. Yeah, I think so too, he said before turning to his new partner. Ready to kick a little ass? Definitely, she said with a smile. They left the Sector 4 ranger station and headed toward the lake. The area was filled with people enjoying their day. Scott and Flora would need to cross the boundary and head to the far side of the lake. The, the boundary lines were designed to keep the general public away from the areas where nightmares were known to spawn. And apparently nightmares are like the wild 
crystallum in the this wild world. women. The wild ones that have not been captured yet. Women the... as nightmares, isn't that just mm. appropriate? Yeah, the public could enjoy the park, and nature could continue to give life to her daughters in peace. In the years since humanity developed limited space travel, learned learned the lessons of ecology and natural living. They still built their <clears throat> they still built their mega cities, but the planets that they lived on were all vibrant and filled with life. Well, except for the mining colonies on dead worlds that did not have life on them from the start. Flora and Scott walked through the crowds of happy people and took in the sight of man and crystallum frolicking in the <laughs> frolicking in the bounty of nature. Scott pointed out a giantess serving tea to a centaur, and Flora giggled sweetly. <laughs> She looked up, then pointed out a group of avia flying around while holding a chair in their talons. A small boy sat in the chair, and he cheered like he was having the adventure of a lifetime. On their way to the boundary, a young man with brown hair ran up to them. That's you. No, it's a man. Uh, well, I know, but, but you're like everybody. Okay, oh. so, yeah, just oh, be, okay. like do Bart Simpson. We're doing books together where he does all the male roles. Okay. Hey, are you a hunter? Scott nodded to the teen, and he clapped his hands together. The brunette said, That's so you. I'm trying to get in the battle net so I can join a league. Would you like to have a battle? Battle? Are you a crystalline battler? Asked Scott. Yes. Well, that's my dream anyway, said the teen in a plucky tone of voice. His baseball cap spoke of youth. The set of his eyes bespoke his determination. Wait, are uh, we, is, that the same, is that the same character? Yeah. I thought we had a teenage girl and Wait, another guy. Are, are, is there a teenage girl? I'm not sure. I maybe imagined no, no. it. No, no. It said brunette, though. So. Yeah, that's him. I Oh, it does say. What? I think he just, I think that's just a mistake. I think he just called the boy a brunette. <laughs> I honestly do. Okay. Okay. Um, I wouldn't mind it, but unfortunately, I just started my career. I only have my first partner. I would not raise your ranking much, since we're both low-level still, admitted Scott. Was that too much information to share? In the wilds? Yes. In the city park? No. That's you. Oh, well, thank you anyway. I came here thinking that I would be able to find a lot of hunters, but there are mostly campers here, said the teen. Yeah, I noticed that there were a lot of people. Have you considered trying Sector 9? It's a grassland area. Fewer people go out there to just have a picnic due to all the tall grass. Hey, not a bad idea. I better be careful, though. Lots of nightmare, lots of nightmares like to hang out in the tall grass. Said the young, <laughs> younger, said almost the younger, man. Al almost man. Well, I guess that clears Stop. that up. <laughs> this yeah. is a situation Stop. which, if I were recording this book, I would go back and and go, okay, figure out the character. <laughs> Maybe not do a girl voice suddenly. Yeah. Scott grinned at the slightly younger man. That was certainly true. Crystalum did like to appear in the tall grass around that area. He'd done field work there frequently. He already had a plant type and wanted to try to acquire a water type for the synergy effect with Flora. Otherwise, he would have headed out that way instead. True, mostly plant types out there. Though, there could be any number of avian, beast, or earth types in the area as well, said Scott. I only have my vole mouse, Pinka. Probably better to stay around here. Avians and water types are easier to handle than earth types for her. Said the would-be battler. You have a vole mouse on your team? Asked Scott. Yeah, I was one of the battlers who won a contest, but was late getting to the television station because I overslept. He shook his head. By the time I arrived, all the good crystalline were taken, and I got this. A sudden flash of light flared from the bracer on the younger man's arm. Lightning surged outward, then formed into the image of a beautiful blonde girl. Petite and slender were words that came up first in Scott's estimation. Those thoughts were immediately followed by the recognition of a rat tail that curled behind her per pert posterior in a zigzag shape and her bright yellow rodent ears. The vole mouse had bright yellow skin, electric blue eyes, and a fiercely angry expression. How dare you! Pinka exclaimed angrily. Pinka! Pinka! Calm down! Began her, began her master. 
The vole mouse thrust her fist toward his face and stopped just short of punching him in the nose. Don't you pinka pinka me, Buster. Where do you get off claiming I'm not good? That's oh, sorry, I keep forgetting. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean it like that. He cried. It's just, say it. She, she snapped. snapped. I <laughs> dare you. Come on, Pinka, don't make me say it, he said angrily. You didn't have a problem saying it on TV, you impotent bastard. Scott's eyes widened. Oh, I remember this now. The contest on D-Jam. But wait, didn't the last guy to show up say something weird about his new partner? Pinka turned to Scott, then blinked. She took in the sight of him, then calmed slightly. Her nostrils flared a little, and her cheeks became flush. Well, hello, sir. Her supposed master blinked, then frowned. Hey, what's with the politeness? I'm sorry that my master has been rude, said Pinka, completely ignoring her master. My name is Pinka. It's nice to meet you, sir. It's nice to meet you too, Pinka, said Scott with a smile. Speaking of rude. Let me introduce the two of you to my friend. Scott turned to Flora. She bit her lower lip a little and waved at them. This is Flora. She's awesome. Flora giggled softly, then slipped a vine up and around her master's waist. That's sweet of you to say. Oh, you're so cute together, said Pinka, her cheeks flush and her eyes sparkling. She bit her lower lip a little and seemed to lose herself in the moment. Pinka's master eyed Flora for a moment, then muttered something that Scott could not quite make out. Pinka, however, heard everything. She whirled around and glared at him. You jerk! A moment later, Pinka began to cry a little, then turned and ran off. Her master sighed, then ran after her after excusing himself. Wonder what he said, asked Flora. Probably something similar to what he said on television, said Scott. What did he say? Asked Flora. Scott snorted. <laughs> when the host asked, what do you think of your new best friend? He said, she's so flat. No way, really? Asked Flora, an incredulous expression writ large on her face. She cried on stage. They had a surprisingly high baseline bond ratio, though, so the TV station just played it off as a comedy skit. Now they're stuck with each other for at least a year, if I remember the supposed rules correctly, said Scott. I'm surprised she didn't electrocute him, said Flora. Scott shrugged. I wouldn't have held it against her. The sound of thunder raced across the area a moment later, followed by the surprisingly high-pitched cry of a familiar voice. Scott and Flora turned toward the sound, and then slowly turned their heads to look at each other. Master, you jerk, cried Pinka in the distance. Surprisingly, the supposed recipient of a powerful electric attack responded in a clear voice. A pancake has more to offer than you. Damn, said Scott. Does he want to stop living? Asked Flora curiously. How much time, how, 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 how long have we gone? Because I haven't, I haven't picked up. I have no idea. Point. Like twenty, uh, <laughs> like fifteen minutes, I think. Okay, let's let's go. Let's see if we can do another five minutes. We we do meet some some mermaids soon. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mermaids. After they parted ways with the gladiator wannabe, they continued toward the boundary. Scott and Flora were accosted a few more times <clears throat> by young people who wanted to battle, but when they realized the current level and status of their intended opponents, they sighed and went away. It would be nearly impossible to make a name for yourself just by fighting level one noobs, even if you were technically a noob yourself. Now that they were clear of the campers, the boundary awaited. They stepped through the silent, they stepped through the slight distortion in the air. A soft shimmering light provided the evidence of the change in the nature of the world. On the other side of the boundary, the world was quiet and pristine. It was the real image of the world without noisy humanity involved in the equation. Few humans existed on the other side. Moving beyond the boundary was illegal without a permit. All right, let's see if we can liberate a few ladies from their nightmare status, said Scott. Yes. Yes, let's, 
said Flora. She grew her vines out slightly and took on a ready appearance. She had already gotten her head in the game, so to speak. Unfortunately, the National Park was a difficult place to locate a nightmare. The constant overhunting of the area kept the park safe and the general level of the nightmares low. However, it also meant that it was harder to actually find one. Scott and Flora walked around the large lake a few times. They did not dare go into it. They did not dare go into it due to the fact that neither of them would be a match for a nightmare in the water. Water crystallum or a high level were needed to deal with an underwater battle. The sun started to set before they finally caught a lead on a possible capture. A, a splash occurred, just a tiny little splash at the edge of the water. It was the sort of thing that most people might not notice. However, by some random act of chance, Scott looked in that direction just as it happened. Get ready, Flora. I think we found one, said Scott. The Alraun. Alraun. Alraun? 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 The Al it's okay, A-L-R-A-U-N-E. So yeah, that's, that's Flora. That's what she is. She's an, I, I guess that just means plant type. Plant type crystallum. Okay. The Alraun room turned toward the water, then nodded. Nothing happened for a moment, so Scott leaned down and picked up a rock. He tossed it toward the water. Suddenly, the water erupted upward in a furious and beautiful display. A creature who was half fish, half supermodel, half fish, half supermodel, rose up out of the water in a glorious display of feminine grace. The mermaid snatched the rock out of the air, then looked at it curiously as she reached the apex of her leap. Flora launched her vines out and gripped the nightmare around the waist. The mermaid, the mermaid cried out in surprise and tried to struggle. However, she was too close to the shore and could not gain momentum. The owl round pulled the fish girl out of the water and onto dry land. Her aquatic powers were cut in half by that action, but that by no means meant that she was out of the fight. The nightmare glared at the plant girl. Come play with me in the water. It'll be fun. She then slapped her fishy tail down on the ground. Water shot out of the lake in a tight, high-pressure spear. Flora took a hard hit to the shoulder and cried out in pain. Fighting a water crystal near the water was a tricky and dangerous proposition. No, thank you, politely replied Flora, a slight hint of pain in her voice. She did not give in to the pain from the minor injury. The battle before her was a battle of wills just as much as it was a battle of skill. Had the mermaid been in the water, it would have been a much stronger attack. Even the minor resistance to water damage that plant types usually possessed would not have saved her from taking greater injury. The Alraun dragged the girl further and further from the water. Scott watched carefully and tried to avoid attracting attention. It would be unethical to get directly involved unless the girl attacked him. His duty was to observe and attack his duty was to observe and act according to that observ. His duty was to observe and act according to that observation. The girls needed to battle it out for the sake of bringing that poor, sexy crystallum to full consciousness. <laughs> the mermaid cried out in pain, then took a deep breath. She unleashed a loud, discordant screech that caused Flora to clutch her ears and fall to the ground. Scott did not fare much better, despite being outside the primary attack range of the sonic effect. He clutched his ears as well, then staggered back. Their intended target used the, moment, the momentary distraction to try and crawl back to the water while dragging Flora with her. If she reached the water, it was over. Whether she continued to fight or flee, they would not be able to beat her in her own element. Scott recovered before Flora and immediately went into action. He called up his inventory screen, then chose to even the, even the odds a little. He could not ethically attack the girl directly and do damage. The attack she used only injured him indirectly but he could certainly inflict a status effect on her. The hunter opened his hand, and a small spherical device shimmered into existence on his palm. It was light blue with metal electrodes. Scott set it to a three-second discharge. He tossed the thunder grenade at the mermaid in a casual manner. It bounced off of her pert, fishy bottom, and she, <laughs> and she turned to look at what had hit her. Just as she did, the grenade went off. A loud bang and a brilliant flash of light engulfed the sexy beast. She cried out in surprise, then went completely limp. The modern-day version of a flashbang grenade did little to no damage, but it did have a high chance to stun an opponent. The effect was especially potent against crystallum who were weak to electrical attacks. 
Flora recovered not long after. She immediately dragged the mermaid back with all the strength she could muster. The nightmare did not resist. She would remain stunned for quite a while. Soon, she was dragged nearly to the tree line, which was a good distance from the water. The Alrone was now more in her element, the was now more in her own element, the forest and grass. She immediately used her attunement to plant life to cause vines and roots to sprout from the ground. They wrapped around the stunned mermaid, then held her tight. Flora quickly began to lash the girl with her personal vines. Vine whip after vine whip rained down on the girl. Eventually, she succumbed to the attacks and lost cohesion. A small blue crystal sphere appeared, then fell to the earth below. There were minor irregularities, bumps and cracks along the surface. Good job, Flora, said Scott excitedly. Okay, I think, I think that's it. I think that's as far as we can go. But yeah, so that's Scotty Futch's uh, Gal Galadia Crystallum Core. And Gal that was probably Galatia? Galatia? Galatia, Galatia, maybe? Galadia. It's hard to say. Uh, let's uh, let's see. Uh, I'm I'm looking at the uh, at the <laughs> comments. We yeah, me at too. The at the chat. If here. I had a dollar for every time a woman yelled, "Don't you pink a pinka at pink a pinka me at me," <laughs> 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 yeah, haven't we all? We've all been there. Yep. Uh, cough. Under Swiggity swooty. What? <laughs> oh, what's up, Sin? I'm I'm seeing a oh, Galatea, Galatea, Galatea. Like Galatea. a gala event. I, I, yeah, gala. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah. <laughs> That's the author. Thunder grenade, euphemism for Taco Bell fart. <laughs> That's how you actually stun your, your female opponents. Ah, uh, yes. Stun her so she lands right on her sexy fishy bottom. Yeah, it's uh, you can combo it with a blanket for, um, what do they call that? A Dutch oven. And that's it's like a <laughs> or nets, a knockout. You know? a, yeah, Use their own mermaid nets on them. Right. Um, um, so I yeah. saw there, Jeff, a request for you to wear a tacky Christmas sweater next time because yeah. I I came in my tacky Christmas sweater and yes. it's very tacky. Let me see. Hold on. I didn't. I didn't very, see. Very very tacky. Here, talk again. I I heard a request for you to oh. to. One second. Wear your tacky sweater. Have you got one? Yeah, I, I do. All right. You better put that on fast. So I gotta run the show on my own on that. So uh, I'm just gonna introduce myself then. So those of you who don't know me, I'm Lori. Um, I'm not totally new to audiobook narration, but I'm kind of new to, to these genres that Jeff specializes in. Um, if uh, I believe we have Dave Wilmarth on here, I will soon be narrating one of his books. Very excited. You were making him look bad. Yeah, yeah, I do that a lot. He I had to run away. Him. The enemy, Sorry, he has fleed. <laughs> minus five to my activity stat for two. You've got a week to your next one, right? When's your next one? Well, I don't know. I'm thinking that this is going to be the last request only for the year. Um, okay. Just every, or if you want, because we're going to be in the same city again soon, we could arrange something and I could bring you a tacky sweater to wear because I have a lot of them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, when, are you, when are you in town again? Thursday or Friday? soon uh around the 22nd or 23rd or so okay yeah, so it's gonna be friday months. my god friday what day? Something. Oh, that's so it's soon. the 17th i don't have anybody's presence that's terrible uh, me neither uh i'm a bad family member yeah maybe so i think record them be... individualized poems or something on audio maybe, maybe like maybe. this is very very personal um gift for you that that could be oh. good like just do their answering machine it's a good like cop out yeah <laughs> do their answering machine yeah uh hi you've just, reached just... the answering machine of Lori's mother please leave <laughs> that after the beat she doesn't uh, for, respond for to her email me, so you might want to do this for me i would just ask them like who's your favorite cartoon character and i just do their voice and oh for their <laughs> uh yeah that's a great idea it's a great idea for their uh on hold messages and or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think I think this is the last request only, and that's kind of why I wanted to do something special, have extra people on here, um, because uh, let's see. After this, I think the <laughs> only other stream that I'll be doing is uh, Dave Wilmarth, Charles Dean, 
and um, Hugo Huesca for wanting me to do a stream with them um, drunk, basically, <laughs> the day before I go to Thailand. So, and, and that'll be the day after Christmas. So mm. I think I think I'll do something with them. I'm not exactly Better sure. Better well. sweeten the pot with a with a little little Christmas gift for your trip. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So it's happy Hanukkah, Daniel. Yeah, and everyone else that has different holidays, definitely happy holidays to you guys. But uh, oh shit, I just broke my. Would you break my cup? Oh, oh no, okay. That could be a lot worse. It's not broken. <laughs> Fine. I was like, oh God, oh God, would you break? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I dealing with a little more of a, like a rinky dink setup. You can probably tell I have more of a more of a um, slap dash setup than Jeff. Uh, I graduated from a very small closet to a slightly larger closet, but yeah, uh, well, congratulations. It takes time sometimes to I, to build these things. I went to I I probably was in a smaller closet than you ever were. Um, I I'm I'm Go pretty on. sure because. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I went from that to this. So I, it was a big leap. It was a big leap when that happened. Um, like, yeah, in, in my, it's in a my good old day when, you, yeah. when you get to upgrade something. Oh, yeah. Uh, in, in my old closet, I literally did not have room to like lift my arms. <laughs> it was yeah, that. I mean, like, I'm, I'm dealing with like. <laughs> You're, you're you're seeing most of it. Yeah. <laughs> like I I realized when I came in here, I brought my laptop in here, and I usually don't have it in here. Mm -hmm. Usually I have a monitor right here, and I'm like, man, I don't have a place to put my water. <laughs> so I like stacked it on top of some clothes. <laughs> just like it's just a mess in here. <laughs> someday, someday you will upgrade to a legit the booth. life of of home narrators. Yeah. Yeah. See, I knew there was a joke coming when you said that, and Dave seized his opportunity. Yeah. What did he say? What did he say? Dave, what you... Jeff came out of the closet and the world mm -hmm. took notice. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Yes, I am going to Thailand, Danny. It'll be crazy. Um, okay, so uh, I so that's that's it for uh Scotty Futch's request. Thank you. Well, actually, this is actually Eden Red requested Scotty and Scotty requested Eden. So thank you, Eden, for requesting Scotty Futch's book. And uh, thank you, Lori, for coming and hanging out with us Thanks. for this stream and being our uh, our crystalum for today. Anytime. Um, and yeah, I Time. guess. <laughs> yeah. If that um, ever comes so up again. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see you again soon, and I'll, I'll see you here in KC pretty soon. Bye, and happy holidays, everybody. Bye. All right. So our next guest... Our next guest will be guest. Our next, geez, our next guest will be Ian Mitchell. I just sent him the invite to come to the hangout, so he'll be here shortly. <clears throat> but just to remind you guys what we're what we're about to read. I'm bringing up the picture since I don't have my fancy program. Since we're on uh, Google Hangouts, Dragon's Trail by Joseph Malik. I think we're doing chapter one for it. Uh, let me see. By Joseph Malik. Oh. Uh, Ian? Is that you? Hello. 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 What's this cuss? Hello. Hello, Ian. What's up, man? Can you hear me? Hello. You can't. You can't hear me. You can't hear me. I can hear you. Oh, you can. Okay. What's up? How's it going? Hey, should I turn off the other uh, stream? Um, yeah. I, I mean, if it's uh, if we can hear it, it doesn't matter if not, unless it's gonna unless it's gonna mess with your bandwidth. Okay. So, Ian. Is there anything was... to do to fix my volume here? Um. I don't know. Are, is anyone having uh, trouble hearing hearing Ian? I'm. I think it sounds sounds good. Okay. Um, I can't hear myself. So. Oh, okay. No, you're you're good for me. Um, I don't see anyone complaining about your your volume. Yep. Danny says it's it's good. All right. Um. So yeah, Ian, tell everybody a little bit more about yourself, and then uh, how you found out about Sound Booth Theater Live. I have no idea how I found Sound Booth Leader. 
that was so long, long ago. Okay. Um, well, to at least my, tell us about yourself. Uh, I've been working as a programmer actually for 30 something years. I read a lot. I just started writing a year and a half ago. Um, the voiceover I got interested in when I went to a, I went to an anime convention and they did a session on voiceover and I got to go do, uh, oh, what was I? A talking sword. <laughs> with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I just been interested in doing this ever since. And how long ago was that you said? Oh gosh, that was like three, four years ago. Oh wow. Yeah, so it's it's been a it's been a slow burn for you. And uh you said that you're you're kind of uh dabbling in narration already, right? With um with another lit RPG <laughs> author, right? Yes. I am so slow getting started. I had a book that I was originally going to do, and it turned out that that fell through. Um, wow. He had already been on contract with someone else. The one I really wanted to do, it had a wonderfully evil character. Um, Those are always the best. I'll get at it. Oh, yes. So I had a question for you. Oh, okay. What the heck is a slow grating voice? That's not much of a description. <laughs> A, yeah. Okay. So, all right. So Ian's asking about the directions for our characters, uh, in this, this, uh, little portion of Dragon's Trail by Joseph Malik. Um, <clears throat> it says, Ooh, he's playing. So Ian's going to be playing Ulo, who is a wizard with a slow grating voice. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> Not it's a whole lot to go on. <laughs> slow and, and great. Okay, so it, when I hear grating, I just think annoying, right? Like, but let's not do that to people. Let's go. Uh, let's just. Let's just. I can do a really slow, whitey voice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I could get it. Past that, <laughs> that's how we get people to click away. Um, let's All let's right. replace the word grating with gravelly. Okay, I can do can gravelly. You do, can you do gravelly? All right. I can do gravelly. Um, Jared is from Earth, a jockish stuntman full of himself, afraid of practically nothing. In this scene, they're talking over hors d'oeuvres before a feast as the room is filling up around them. Okay. Um, so, and if he's a wit, can you do, can you do accents? If not, it's fine. I, I'm pretty much you're going to get my voice. Okay. Whatever touches I can put on it. All right. Okay. So then we'll, we're just going to have an American wizard. I know that sounds weird, guys, but just hang with us. It's necessary to get. I will get to. I will out. get the accents eventually. Okay. Well. So here goes. I'm pretty sure this is chapter one of Dragon's Trail. If not, sorry. Uh, but it's 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 on a PDF. So we'll we'll see. Go ahead and get started for us, Ulo. You don't appreciate the danger you're in. Ulo began. Story of my life, Jared admitted, picking up his wine. You have no rights here. You have no ability to stop anything your superiors decide to start. So you say. Go on. Let's suppose you discover nefarious doings far over your head. Jared set his chalice down. Let's. Do you think there's some court of appeals here? A United Nations floor to air grievances? Have you ever seen a court of law in this world? Come to think of it. He shook his head after a moment's reflection. No, not really. Huh. There are no courts here, said Ulo. Not as you'd know them. No one has ever derived any concept of individual justice here. The moral order that you take as axiomatic is an artifice. I am not drunk enough for this conversation. <laughs> Laws here are laid down by the rulers at their own whim and upheld by auxiliaries. That's why there are no real laws in any of these realms. Well, one law. 
the strong rule. Lucky for me. I lost my place, sorry. <laughs> you need to take your ideas of right and wrong and go home, now. I don't see that happening, said Jared. Maybe they need a judicial system. Maybe they need somebody to stand up and tell them what we, that we hold these truths to be self-evident. You know, and all that. I thought so myself once. And? asked Jared. I became king, not president. Jared gave it a respectful... J Jared gave it a respectful moment. Point taken. They've never read Plato's Republic. They've never heard the Sermon on the Mount. The very concepts that your perceptions of right and wrong are based on are completely alien to these people. Jared drained his wine, snapping his fingers at the server and pointing to the empty. Keep going, he told Ulo. The justice you're fighting for. I didn't think I was... You are, Ulo assured him. It's an artificial virtue that's necessary for a society that doesn't exist here. Your concepts of right and wrong are a function of the voluntary agreements of a non-existent... Not... <coughs> sorry. Of a non-existent social contract. And? And you're just going to make people mad. Looks like it's working. Except here, there is nothing to stop anyone you anger, not just me, from throwing you in a dark hole with your eyes burned out and leaving you there until everyone forgets about you. Which won't take as long as you think. So if this develops into war... You mean when, Jared corrected. If this develops into a war... Ulo repeated. Thousands of people are going to die. You are powerless to stop it. You'll be swept up into the machinery of war and spat out upon a, yeah, and spat out on a bloody field someplace. If you're not snatched away in the dead of the night and buried alive, a bit of an ignoble end either way, don't you think? The mushroom plate was pushed aside, and another plate, piled high with sausages around a pot of mustard, was sat between them. Jared smirked. I can't be the first person to have trouble taking you seriously. You could be the last. Are you threatening me? Um, yeah. Having trouble paging. It doesn't have to come to that. Jared dipped a sausage in the mustard and bit off a chunk. So, all you are saying is give peace a chance. Ulo uh, has a slow, intriguing smile. Sorry. Still having trouble finding my place. Should be at the top of page three. You are sorely outmatched, Ulo, Ulo said. My bloodline goes back a hundred generations here. You are out of your element, and if there is a war, thousands of men are going to die. And one of them is going to be you. And if you start sticking your nose where it doesn't belong, which is your order, stock and trade, you won't live to see a minute on the field of glory. Jared swallowed, cleared his throat, and stuck out his hand. <clears throat> you know, we got off to a bad start. I'm Jared. I didn't get your name. Ulo continued, unfazed. They are giving you what you want. Enjoy it. Uh, I am. But pump your brakes. You want me to throw the fight? I don't want to fight. Jared chewed at him for a moment. Yeah. I can believe that. Fighting is not my style. What I'm saying is take what you've been offered and do your best to lie low. Your life is, will be considerably easier and longer. Jared laughed under his breath. <laughs> if you're asking me to take a dive, you'd better consult your evil sorcerer's manual. You're doing great so far with the whole thing, by the way. You've got the robe, the mannerisms, that voice thing, this little intimidation speech. It works for you. Me? 
I couldn't pull that off. This is who I am. Sure, said Jared. I'm not saying. He hunted for the word, and then subtle, settled on Jared's term. Take a dive, Jared. I'm saying, let us not rush into anything that would make us. Again, he searched for a word. Uncomfortable. Jared swabbed another sausage and mustard. I'm a soldier. Comfort is not one of my concerns. Your comfort, much less so. No offense. You're not going to give me a lecture about how avoiding a fight isn't in your character. Funny. I've had this talk a lot recently. I'm sure. I was there when you took down Loth. Jared's eyes hardened as he locked them in, as he locked them with Ulo's. Then let's talk ignoble deeds. If you fuck with me, I'll take whatever pieces of you are left when I'm done, and I'll load them into a catapult and launch them in the general direction of your homeland. So, you're gonna kill me? You decide. Were you raised a wrathful jinguist? Or is it more of a birth defect? Jared cleared a fennel seed from his incisor with a fingernail as his wine was refilled. Do you want an ass-kicking? I'm free after this. boy. Do me a favor, said Jared. Piss me off. Every man has his price. Consider yours. Drums and dancing girls began. Jared picked up his wine and stood. I didn't come here to sell my soul, he said. I came here to buy it back. We'll talk again, said the sorcerer. Only when I negotiate your surrender. Okay. So that was the scene. Um, I was like a... I don't know, it kind of reminds, reminded me of like a, like a Scorsese scene in a film where two people are like talking to each other, you know, about like they're mortal enemies, right? But they're civilly talking to each other about how they're going to fuck each other up. I'm going to kick your ass. How do you like the wine? I'm gonna... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, uh, Ian, um, for you, I have some tips. Oh, great. Practice. More practice, dude. Because cause what I can hear is that you actually have a pretty good grip on inflection, but what you, what you don't have yet is, like, you're not transporting yourself into the character. Right, you're you're right. still just focused on the inflection. Oh, seriously, I right. honestly there wasn't enough description, nor do I have enough from prior to this to really have any feel for this character whatsoever. Right, right. Well, that's that's why you just kind of have to like, was, jump into some kind of you know some kind of character. You were just you, right? You, you the whole time, right? But figure out. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter who he who he is. You just like you gotta just let something form in your head. Okay. You know, and take like, you know, I th I think the the best way to describe, uh, what you do as a as a voice, as a character actor is puppeteering. You know, right? Like, you almost have to have a puppet of the character in your head flapping its jaws while you're talking. You know, uh and like you 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 see the thing and like. Visualize, visualization, I would say, is my, my most useful tool when it comes to character acting. Um, oh, that's, no, that makes plenty of sense. When I did the uh, thing on the, the voiceover with the anime folks, I had a pretty good description of the character, and I could imagine a scene. And um, Yeah, and, and it makes it easier, right, to, like, embody whatever, you know, whatever they're telling you. You, you, you take those descriptions, you build your puppet, Right, that one was a little easier. Actually, I was a magic yeah. sword that had a voice of a scholar. Ah, you know, that's definitely out of my normal head. Yeah. Well, you, you know what? Let's let's. Can we start over from the from the beginning and then just do like five more minutes and like, uh, let. But before we get started, let's build your character, out of, like visually build your character. So Ulo's a wizard okay. with a slow, great, slow, gravelly. Let's say gravelly voice. Let's. That's all we have so far. But, okay, what do you see in your head when 
right now. Just some guy in a robe that that's it's like I don't know what sort of wizard he is, what he's into, what he's into blowing up, his domain. Okay, so make that shit up. Fill that fill that in yourself. Because we, we don't have a book <laughs> okay. right in front of we don't know we don't have a book, right? We we just right. have this one little scene. So and and we've read through the so you, you have some sense of who he is just from his lines that we've already gone through, right? Um, All right. He's, he's not a pushover, right? He's, he's no, pretty. a king. He's a sorcerer. Um, he's, he's pretty much going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this big, tough guy. Yep. He's looking like he's pretty well, thinks he's badass, and probably is. Okay. Um, let's think, think of what he looks like. And 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 there's no way to get there's no way to get this wrong, right? Like, how, just a picture's got to just pop into your head, right? Like, just something. The first thing that comes to your mind. I'm seeing the. Uh, I still keep seeing the the ice wizard out of uh, that cartoon. Um, uh, Adventure Time. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh. I forget what he's called. Okay, do it. <laughs> I, I see. I see what you're talking about. All right. Uh, so, so, uh, yeah, keep that in your head. Uh, while, let me go while, while you're doing this. Let me go grab a picture of him. Come on. Yeah, I can't find one, but that's okay. Um, I can. Uh, I I found him. All right. I'm facebooking it to you. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, he's a. Uh... Let's give that a try. All right. I... All right, so we're just going to go for another, just just for five minutes, maybe like the first two pages. There's like four pages of the of dialogues. So we'll just do the first two pages, and then we'll, then we'll move on. Just, just, all right, so you got this, just keep thinking of that, just keep thinking of that Adventure Time Ice King guy. Keep that in your head while, while you give voice to him, and it's, you start whenever you're ready. You don't appreciate the danger you're in. Ulo began. Story of my life, Jared admitted, picking up his wine. You have no rights here. You have no ability to stop anything your superiors decide to start. So you say. Go on. Let's suppose you discover nefarious doings far over your head. Jared set his chalice down. Let's. Do you think there's some court of appeals here? A United Nations floor to air grievances? Have you even seen a court of law in this world? Come to think of it, he shook his head after a moment's reflection. No, not really. Huh. There are no courts here, said Ulo. Not as so much as you'd know them. No one has ever derived any concept of individual justice here. The moral order that you take is axiomatic as an artifice. All right, you're losing him. You're losing him. Your character's slipping. You're becoming you gradually. I'll try. Let's go back to not as you'd know them. Not as you'd know them. No one has ever derived any concept of individual justice here. The moral order that you take is axiomatic is an artifice. I am not drunk enough for this conversation. Laws here are laid down by the rulers at their whim and upheld by auxiliaries. That's why there are no real laws in any of these realms. Well, one law. The strong rule. 
Lucky for me. You need to take your ideas of right and wrong and go home. Now. I don't see that happening, said Jared. Maybe they need a judicial system. Maybe they need somebody to stand up and tell them what we hold these, that we hold these truths to be self-evident. You know, and all that. I thought so. Myself. Once. And? asked Jared. I became king. Not president. Jared gave it a respectful moment. Point taken. They've never read Plato's Republic. They've never heard the Sermon on the Mount. The very concept that your perceptions of right and wrong are based upon are completely alien to these people. Jared drained his wine, snapping his fingers at the server and pointing to the empty. Keep going, he told the justice you. <laughs> the justice you've been fighting for. I didn't think I was... You are. Uh, Ulo assured him. Artificial virtue that's necessary for a society that doesn't exist here. Your concept of right and wrong are a function of the voluntary agreements of a non-existent social contract. And? And you're just going to make people mad. Looks like it's working. Except here, there is no... There is nothing to stop anyone you anger, not just me, from throwing you in a dark hole with your eyes burned out and leaving you there till everyone forgets about you, which won't take as long as you think. So if this develops into a war... You mean when? Jared corrected. If this develops into a war... Ulo repeated. Thousands of people are going to die. You are powerless to stop it. You'll be swept up in the machinery of war and spat out on a bloody field somewhere. If you're not snatched away in the dead of the night and buried alive, a bit of an ignoble end either way, don't you think? All right, cool. So, yeah, I think you did a lot better that time. Like, I, I felt more... I, I felt... Uh, I felt more... Um, more force, right? I felt more like you were engaged in what you were talking about. Um, and I saw the character in my head a little bit more while you were doing that. Um, yeah, definitely more practice though, dude. Like, uh, are you, are you on ACX? Not yet. Um, I'd say, you know, gear up a little bit, you know, you don't have to get a lot of great gear, find some, you know, find some jobs that, that, yeah, you can just get right. Because at this level, there's, there's a lot of people out there trying to get jobs but the, the only thing you can do is is get something at entry level and see what you can do um but sure. also you know um try try uh try imitating more of the people that you listen to you know try and um and imitate more of the characters that you like to uh watch on cartoons and stuff like that um do what you can to to visualize what you're what you're reading and embody that and really all you can do is practice so hey thanks for coming on to the show i'm 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 so happy to have had you on here because i'm so happy to have had your support for so long man um thank you jeff i really appreciated it and i've loved the show actually um, i think the first one i went and saw was uh you reading the other life dreams way back when that that was probably my first one yeah uh that was on what uh periscope probably even i think i was doing periscope back then instead of facebook and youtube and twitch so um i don't yeah. remember I, i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure but yeah that's what i started on because that's the first one that i knew about that people could just use their phone real quick and just go straight live so oh that's uh, right yeah i remember that yeah, and that I quickly got away from that because it just wasn't, just wasn't it, doing anything for me. But um, yeah, all the way back then, man. So thanks so much for for all the support over the what year and a half now that I've been doing it. And, and thanks for uh, all the Hashi readings. I love those. Oh yes, yes. those were so wonderful. 
Oh man, well they they were fun to read. Um, I hope you're still working on that, and I hope you you get that published someday and polished up and ready to make you some some. Dough. Yeah, I kind of hit a hiatus. But... Yeah, well you know it it'll pick back up, and maybe that'll be your first audiobook uh, project. You know, like first narrated well, and what... written by. You know, that's what got me reading. Um, just reading chapters out of the thing. So. Right, right. Well, well, thanks. Uh, I'm going to check off of the Google Hangouts. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Ian, and uh, have a good one. And we got, uh, and thank you guys for hanging out with us. We have one more request to do. And today, and this is our cringe theater for tonight. No, uh, the, the Dirty Pokemon was not the cringe theater for tonight. Um, the Lude Shadow Mancer will be our cringe theater for tonight by Eden Red. Uh, Stupid Glare, Lude Shadow Mancer by Eden Red. Uh, requested by Scotty Futch of Sexy Pokemon fame. And actually, Eden told me that she wanted me to read chapter four. And um, from what I hear, it is super duper inappropriate. So this ought to be really fun, guys. So remember, if you are afraid of inappropriate content, if you are, yeah, yes, ladies and gentlemen, let the cringe begin. That is, that is correct. It's coming, guys. Oh, didn't even, that's, is that a pun? Do I have to drink? I can't, I, can't, I really would drink, guys, but I'm, I'm sick. I don't want to make it any worse um <clears throat> but let me get to chapter four and we'll get started lewd shadow mancer i'm trying to remember i think i let me find the uh the book description of this because i think it's something to do with uh i think it's something to do with um Okay, some guy, eh, crap, I'll look at it on Amazon and I'll read the description there. Here it is. Okay. Can becoming the village, can becoming the villain change who you are? Nathan's life has been a pile of, has been a vile pit for longer than he would like to admit. Searching for an escape, he spends the last of his cash on a VR game called Lewd Saga. Lewd Saga is a virtual MMORPG based in the fantasy world of Lucan. Lucan? Lucan? Home of dragon royalty, human kingdoms, and troll masters. Players quest, grow their abilities, join in great battles, and find love and lust whatever form they desire, in whatever form they desire. There is no taboo too great or too intimate. Upon entering the VR world, the player soon discovers he doesn't have to live by society's rules any longer. He quickly realizes players will pay real money to exact revenge on other players. Nathan, who feels like life took everything from him, can now carve out his destiny and make those who ever crossed him know his dark power. Will Nathan succumb to his darkness when, they are great, when there are greater evils trying to infect the virtual fantasy world? Will the love of another breath, breathe life into his cynical heart? Will he question if he is the true villain or something else? All right. So, here goes. Lewd Shadowmancer by Eden Red. Chapter 4. <clears throat> Slowly blinking, Nero watched flashes of the night sky fill his vision. With a groan, he stirred from his slumber and lifted his head. Eyes widened as several dead stood around him, staring with blank, hollow eyes. The Shadowmancer moved and sat up. Hands fell to the pommel of his blades, and there they stayed. 
The undead made no move other than a small swaying in the cold night air. Nero quickly took in his stats in the corner of his vision. Nero Sin, Shadowmancer Troll. Hit points, HP, 36 out of 50. Armor, 5. Dark Mana Pool, 35 out of 35. Strength, 9. Intelligence, 11. Wisdom, 12. Plus 1. Dexterity, 12. Plus 1. Stamina, 11. Charisma, 15. Plus 2. Abilities. Whisper to the Dead, 12. Soul Drink, 12. Troll Regeneration, 10. Passive Ability. Skills, Sneak, 11. Spells, None. Nero reached around. Ne <laughs> I'm like, watching out for dirty things. Nero reached around and touched his back. The arrow's no longer there. Feeling better by the moment, he turned his attention back to the dead surrounding him. A humanoid shadow slipped in and knelt down between the standing corpses. Glowing purple eyes were the only feature the shadow had as it stared blankly at the troll. Nero remembered his ability to whisper to the dead. Spending a charisma point, he wondered if they were ready to talk. You saved me? Nero asked. The wraith nodded its incorporeal head. Okay, I don't know what sex this wraith is. So I'm going to do something. I did bring out the movie announcer voice. Um, well, the movie announcer voice is like sexy, right? Okay. Uh, I'm going to do something. Yeah, something genderless. Yes. It hissed. What happened to the paladins and knights? They retreated. We overwhelmed them. Nero let out a breath. Why did you save me? The wraith eyed him for a long moment. You reek of the dark light. The Shadowmancer's shoulders relaxed. He wasn't sure how far his class and abilities extended. A strange comfort filled him as he now knew that the dead would pause when it came to attacking him. The thought of them saving him renewed his faith in picking the right class. The Fox Woman. Did you see where she went? The Kid Mori escaped. Long gone. Nero nodded, feeling a sliver of loss at not being able to thank her for distracting the knights. The wraith shifted closer on its knees. The troll continued to stare at the undead shadow and noticed as its dark shape morphed and changed before his eyes. Nero couldn't understand what was happening until the darkness flowed together, forming an outline of a body. You are one of us, but so weak, the wraith hissed. Nero raised an eyebrow. The wraith's body took on a feminine form as hips curved and breasts took shape. The body was made of complete darkness, but it clearly took a woman's figure, with black nipples rising from firm black breasts. Nero's brow softened as the wraith's form became semi-solid. Purple eyes blinked amid a smooth black face. The shadowy undead floated closer, a black hand touching the Shadowmancer's chest. And just to remind everybody, this is cringe theater. So be prepared for some crazy shit about to happen. Be prepared. Hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your husband. This is, this is NSFW as fuck. We have a gift for you, the wraith hissed. Nero was frozen as he sat. You know, Nero is a, a troll. Maybe I should give him a gruffer voice. A black hand flowed down his chest to his belt. Nimble fingers moved to the buckle, and with one expert motion, the buckle was undone. Black fingers curled into the black leather waist and pulled down. The Shadowmancer didn't stop the female wraith. She moved with it. 
She moved with a dark eagerness, and only when his leggings were down to his ankles did the troll press a palm to his chest. Clothes, armor, and weapons faded from sight, and the blue-skinned troll sat, arms back and holding his torso up. Here we go. The wraith looked down at the troll's thick, blue member as it rose on its own power. Black fingers moved to the throbbing shaft and coiled around it, giving it a gentle but firm squeeze. <laughs> oh, man. This gift? That's the same guy I did earlier. Hold on. This gift? Eh, pretty much the same. I'll just keep it. Nero asked. A gift we impart to you if you first fill us with life. The wraith whispered and began stroking it. Nero relaxed a little, but an odd sensation filled his senses. The wraith was not warm or cold. The player could feel pressure around his member, but it didn't feel alive. It felt more like a neutral force, stroking his cock up and down. Kind of like he's fucking a chair or something. Eyes shifted to the shapely wraith. Her outline was sexy, but lack of features gave her an almost alien appearance. He wasn't sure he would be up for this kind of encounter, but glancing to his cock, he knew he was ready. Letting out a sigh, he wondered about the gift the wraith would impart onto him. Knowing his quest, he was fine with any gifts and a little undead private time to further his power. The wraith bent her head down, a line forming where a mouth should be. Use the space raptor voice for, for the troll? Maybe. I'll just do that. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll do it. Nice request. Good job. Black lips parted and a long, pointed black tongue snaked out. Nero watched as it lit the end of his troll hood. Cock bouncing to the touch caused the wraith to want more. Tongue coiling around the shaft, her mouth closed over the top. A wet suckling sound filled the woods as the wraith's mouth slowly took every inch. Nero watched as she soon began slowly bobbing her head. Blue inches, blue inches appeared and disappeared as the undead wanted more. Wet sensations filled the shadow mancer as he soon lost his train of thought, gazing upon the undead. The zombies and skeletons surrounding them continued to watch silently swaying to a non-existent breeze. The troll's hands clenched as the sucking motion grew tighter after each passing moment. It felt like the wraith was trying to suck out his very soul through his rock-hard cock. Nero would be lying if he said it didn't feel good. I mean, he's kind of like sitting there letting it happen. The blissful sensations caressed his alert nerves as the wraith tried to pull his life from him. The rhythm continued as the troll's cock throbbed. Nero groaned as he could feel himself getting closer to release. Ready to fill the wraith's mouth, she stopped and pulled away from his cock. Black body moving, she crawled over him and placed a single hand on his chest. Wait, did I? Yeah. Pushing down, Nero obeyed as her hips were directly over his. The troll felt his cock stiffen and touch the space between her ass cheeks. Firm, black as pitch breasts bounced as she reached down with her other hand and took hold of the troll's thick member. Raising her hips some, she pressed his throbbing head to her forming slit. Nero moved his hips, pressing his cock head to her thin line. The wraith moaned as gravity took over. Hips sank down an inch or two. Black lips parted, and soon thick inches invaded her dark valley. Nero let out his own groan as the wraith sank down. His thick blue spear parted inner walls, and a seductive moan fell from black lips. A storm of bliss rose up and clouded up minds. What? Oh, sorry. A storm of bliss rose up and clouded minds. Nero took hold of her hips, forcing her down to the hilt. 
The wraith leaned forward, her black breasts pushing into his face. Suckle on me, like the living, the wraith hissed. I need some water. Perfect timing for that, by the way. Nero parted his lips and clamped down on a raised black nipple. A gasp filled the air as the wraith was caught in his living energy. Nero wasn't sure what to expect when tasting the wraith. Bliss curled into his lips, begging him to be inside her. The dark energy of her body called to him like a lover he had always known. The shadow mancer closed his eyes as he enjoyed the dark wanting between them. The wraith moaned her pleasure, lost to the living touch of a creature. The power of his life force fueling his member only caused her to moan louder. The suckling at her breasts was a touch of the divine she had long forgotten. Energy stabbed at her between black thighs. Her dark ass vibrated with each downward thrust on the troll's throbbing cock. Wet sounds played their song as the troll and wraith were caught in a private living storm. The symphony played louder and louder, and both creatures closed the distance between life and death. Life, fill me with your life, the wraith moaned seductively. Nero's hand. I can't imagine doing this kind of thing on the regular, you know, like as a job. Like doing it, doing it like this, publicly embarrassing myself is fine once in a while. But like, if all I did was erotica, man, that'd be rough. Nero's hand glided down as the wraith moved up and down slowly. Fingers grazed a raised clit and the shadow mancer rubbed it with his thumb. The wraith slowed her tempo taking in the delightful touch of the troll. Bodies moved to a primal rhythm. The outside world dimmed and the power between their bodies only grew into a deafening roar. Nero couldn't hold back any longer. Cock thickening, the pressure had reached its apex. The wraith moved with deliberate slow motions, purple eyes open and staring at the anguish filling the troll's face. Nero's body cried out for release, the dam of willpower cracked and then burst. The wraith's eyes widened as she thrust down to the hilt. Pressure pushed at the inner walls until molten cum spurted upwards. Life touched the undead wraith and it sent her over the edge. A long moan rose up as long dead abyssal nerves fired. Purple light blazed as the undead shadow felt sp Spurt after sp purple light blazed as the undead shadow felt spurt after spurt of living life. Phil, damn it. I have to say this again. Purple light blazed as the undead shadow felt spurt after spurt of living life fill her small inner space. Ecstasy crashed into undead nerves and the long dead emptiness was alive once again. The wraith's purple eyes widened again, life licking her insides and igniting her own pleasure. An, an orgasm bloomed and the wraith clamped her thighs to the troll's hips. Shuddering, a shadow of a heartbeat once and then twice. Oh man. This is not fun to do sick. <clears throat> Nero opened his eyes as cum spurted again. <laughs> I thought the coming was over. This is, uh, I guess trolls have, like, more endurance or just bigger loads. He drank in... He dr <laughs> Wrong, wrong word. He drank in the vision before him. Shadows pulled back to reveal a beautiful face. The black shadowy form melted away to a stunning nude woman moving on him. Blonde hair bounced, as did firm, pale breasts. Pink nipples glowed, and the ghostly woman let out a screaming orgasm. The player took hold of her waist, holding her down as the last drop of seed spurted into her already full valley. 
The woman bent forward, pressing her full lips to his, tongue snaking into his mouth. The troll held her close, tongues playing in a supernatural light. Seconds passed, though it felt like lifetimes. The light faded, darkness rushed over pale skin, blonde hair turned black and withered away. Nero kept her close until her body became shadow once more. The wraith pulled back, purple glowing eyes on the shadow mancer. Nero looked to her, a warmth rushing up his neck and into his face. The wraith savored every drop as she moved slightly on the troll's half-hard cock. No cum spilled as it had all... No cum spilled as it had all been absorbed into the undead creature. Nero relaxed as the wraith continued riding him slowly, a little at a time. Okay, wait a second. Isn't cum in this... in this... Uh, context spelled C-U-M, or is that just a porn thing? I'm confused about that. You have acquired a new ability. Sense the dead. You may now spend dark mana to sense the undead within 100 feet of the caster. Wisdom influences this ability. And it's like... A stat screen ruins all sexiness whatsoever. Maybe it was maybe it's because I I uh I ruined it with that question. The Wraith looked down to Nero's lost eyes. Bending forward, she pressed the side of her black head to his thick chest. Excuse me. Nero curled his arms around her and she snuggled into him, taking in every beat of his strong heart as the cold returned to her undead spirit. Nero stepped onto the journey road. The sun warmed the eastern horizon with a yellow glow. The troll turned to the thick forest along the southern edge of the wide road, watching some of the corpses shamble back into the dark forest. A black shadow stayed at the edge, purple eyes glowing and staring at the Shadowmancer troll. The two gazed upon one another, speaking with no words. Nero felt the connection and cherished it. The dead and wraith. The dead and wraith escorted him the rest of the way to the road. The Shadowmancer was grateful for the new ability and his dead companions. The wraith stayed by his side the entire way, looking to him with a dark fondness. Nero wasn't sure if it was his abilities or the moment they shared together, but the Shadowmancer appreciated it nonetheless. The dead liked him and it seemed some would even love him. The player enjoyed the dark edge of the game, memories of the tryst still floating in the back of his mind. The wraith whispered to him as they traveled, telling of the growing swarms of darkness and the end of living fire. Nero listened but said nothing, unsure what she meant. Oh, okay. They both work. Yay, glad, glad you're watching it, uh, Eden. How come she's not in the chat with you guys? Nero listened, but said nothing, unsure what she meant. He knew the dread lords were amassing their forces while working with the trolls, but that all fell into politics. As a player, he simply didn't want to get involved in the bigger storylines. Staring at the forest edge, he pondered the smaller, more intimate quests and adventures. The Kitmori he helped save appeared like a ghost from a dream. He wondered if she truly made it out okay, gone from the vile knights and paladins who were ready to do her harm. It had all become such a jumble, and the player mentally swept it away. Once he made it to the road, the dead and wraith retreated back into the forest, and he could continue on with his dark quest, his first task was to grow his abilities and power. A simple but effective plan. The Shadowmancer turned his boots westward and began walking, the rising sun to his back and purpose in his dark heart. Yeah, and that's chapter four. So, um, that's Lude Shadowmancer. 
pretty pretty sexy scene. I remember Jay, I think it was Jay Taylor commenting about that scene being awesome. Uh pretty good. Pretty good for some porno. Um I, I think I think that the stats I don't know, maybe need to happen during the sex. That way it's like, oh, but we're already doing it, so like this little text box isn't gonna ruin things right now. But like right afterwards, it's like beep boo. Like, oh shit. Like <laughs> I don't know. I'm totally bullshitting. Thank you, Scotty Futch, for requesting Eden Red. Thank you, Eden Red, for requesting Scotty Futch. Both of your ex excerpts were delightful. Also, thank you, Danny Katz, for requesting um uh derp blanking on the name questing uh, uh the dragon's derp trail the dragon's trail by joseph Ma malik um this is i'm pretty sure <laughs> joe malik i think it's joseph i think it said joseph on the cover Yeah, it says Joseph on the cover. Um, this will. This is. I think this is the last request only for the year. Um, we'll see if I have another one in me before then. But until then, um, I'll keep you guys posted on the Facebook group whenever the next Sound Booth Theater Live, ooh, anything is coming up. Um, but we'll still have a poll. Um, maybe, maybe I'll do an SBTL. Requests only from Thailand. Wouldn't that be cool? Like somewhere on the beach? What do you guys think of that? Um, well, we'll have a poll up. There's plenty of requests that didn't make it this this time. Um, meanwhile, maybe think of some requests that might be appropriate for a Thai beach. Yes, and drunk. Definitely, be. I'll, I can be drunk. Um, and Dave, do you, what was it that you guys were talking about me doing, uh, right before I leave y you, me, Charles and Hugo drinking and so, there had to be something else involved. Maybe a scene from each of your books. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. Drunky reading. Well, whatever it is, it'll involve alcohol. We'll we'll talk about it. I'll probably have something up. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks for coming and hanging out. Um, thank you again, Lori, for doing a little duet with me at the very beginning and being uh, being sexy Pokemons. Um, thank you, Ian Mitchell, for showing up and giving giving your college best, the good old college try. I don't know how that goes. Uh, with with your reading of the the ice wizard from adventure time and um yeah thank you guys for thank you guys for all the times you've come to watch the show like i said i've been doing this for like a year and a half now and i i don't think i've been giving it my best effort in the past six months you know it's it's hard. It's hard to keep going with this, but I know you guys have a lot of fun and I have a lot of fun doing it. So I, I want to keep going. I want to, uh, I want to make it better next year. So if you guys have any ideas about the stream, about what you'd like to see in the show, what you'd like to see me do on the show, make some comments in the Facebook group, you know, talk about this stuff, maybe put in your own polls, um, not stripper polls. Um, I'm not, I don't think I'd be good at that. Plus, I don't think it'd really do well in this booth because it's already kind of like, it's already a little bit wobbly. I don't think it could really support me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I kind of, you know what? I kind of like the idea of singing a song at the at the beginning of each show. And we could do, we could do like a request of of bands. Like I get to choose which song, but we just have like a poll and then... I'll put up three different bands and then you guys, bands or artists, and then you guys vote on which one for the next one. And I'll just do a song from them. 
and it would especially be cool for duets because then we could like harmonize and shit um but that's just, that'd just be an intro to the show or maybe an outro i don't know there's there's other stuff that could be done to make this show more fun uh more interesting um but yeah that's it that's it for tonight um so i don't know i i can't i can't thank you guys enough for supporting me and supporting this channel supporting the show and and supporting me and my authors as audiobook as an audiobook producer and um as a narrator um you know i i i appreciate everything that you guys have done for me so um until next time until the next sound booth theater live adios